The exact details as to the final completion of the Old Testament canon are not known. However, the Old Testament provides some evidence of the manner in which the various books were recognized as canonical. The best way to look at the process is to consider it in two parts. The writings of Moses and the writings after Moses. The first five books of Scripture were basically the work of one man. Moses The Bible says that God spoke face to face with Moses. Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I the Lord reveal myself to them in visions, I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly, and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Moses had a unique relationship with the Lord. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Moses spoke God's word to the people. In addition, God had Moses write down authoritative scripture. While both forms were God's word, the only permanent form was that which was written. Early in the history of the nation of Israel there was evidence that certain writings had God's authority behind them. These writings served as a standard for belief and practice. The first five books of the Old Testament are known variously as the Law, the Law of Moses, the Torah, and the Pentateuch, meaning five books. The idea of a canon goes back to Moses' writings. God's Law in the Wilderness Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses was recognized as writing them under the authority of God. The Lord told him to write down certain things. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write down these words. For in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. The writings that came from Moses were the books of Genesis through Deuteronomy. Moses seems to have used earlier documents to write Genesis. For example, we read in Genesis. This is the written account of Adam's family line. When God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. It seems that Moses collected some written records to compile Genesis. In Exodus it says, Moses then wrote down everything the Lord had said. He got up early the next morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve stone pillars representing the twelve tribes of Israel. The Book of Numbers states, At the Lord's command, Moses recorded the stages in their journey. This is their journey by stages. In Deuteronomy we find the following. So Moses wrote down this song that day and taught it to the Israelites. We find that in the book of Exodus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy there are specific references of Moses writing things that the Lord had revealed to him. Therefore, from the beginning, we find God ordering certain things to be written down and placed in a book. Scripture says that Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord in the book of the covenant and then read it to the people. Moses then wrote down everything the Lord had said. He got up early the next morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and set up twelve stone pillars representing the twelve tribes of Israel. This shows that the people regarded the Book of the Covenant, probably Exodus 20 to 23, as a standard of what to believe and how to behave. The Law of Moses was to be preserved as memorial. The king was to have a copy of Scripture. When he takes the throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself on a scroll a copy of this law, taken from that of the Levitical priests. It is to be with him, and he is to read it all the days of his life, so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God, and follow carefully all the words of this law and these decrees, and not consider himself better than his fellow Israelites, and turn from the law to the right, 
or to the left, then he and his descendants will reign a long time over his kingdom in Israel. The writings were also to be a witness to the people. After Moses finished writing in a book the words of this law from beginning to end, he gave this command to the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Take this book of the law and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God. There it will remain as a witness against you. The law of Moses assigned specific responsibility to various Old Testament groups and officials. To the Levites was given the custody or care of the written scriptures. So Moses wrote down this law and gave it to the Levitical priests, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and to all the elders of Israel. Those who came afterward accepted the law of Moses as an authoritative work. The book of Joshua accepted that Moses' writings were authoritative. Joshua wrote, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Joshua read all of Moses' words to the people. As Moses, a servant of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites, he built it according to what is written in the book of the law of Moses an altar of uncut stones, on which no iron tool had been used. On it they offered to the Lord burnt offerings and sacrificed fellowship offerings. The people were supposed to observe what was in the law of Moses. Joshua said, Be very strong. Be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, without turning aside to the right or to the left. The fact of the survival of certain pagan nations around Israel proved the truth of what God had said to Moses. We read in Judges. They were left to test the Israelites to see whether they would obey the Lord's commands, which he had given their ancestors through Moses. Later generations considered the writings of Moses as authoritative. There are many Old Testament references to this. For example, in the book of First Kings we are told that those who keep the law of Moses will prosper and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go. In Second Kings, we find a specific law about how to treat the children of murderers. Their source was the book of the law of Moses. Yet he did not put the children of the assassins to death, in accordance with what is written in the book of the law of Moses, where the Lord commanded, Parents are not to be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their parents. Each will die for their own sin. In 2 Kings chapter 22, the Bible records the account of the rediscovery of the book of the law by Hilkiah. Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan, who read it. The law was then read to the good king Josiah. Then Shaphan the secretary informed the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robes. He, in turn, had the law read to the people. Then the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the temple of the Lord. Again we find the people were expected to obey that which was written in the law. We also discover that the kings of Israel and Judah were judged according to how they obeyed or disobeyed the law of Moses. Jeroboam was judged for disobeying the law of Moses. Go tell Jeroboam that this is what the Lord the God of Israel says. I raised you up from among the people and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you. But you have not been like my servant David who kept my commands and followed me with all his heart doing only what was right in my eyes. Jehoshaphat was blessed for keeping God's law. They taught throughout Judah, taking with them the book of the law of the Lord. They went around to all the towns of Judah and taught the people. The fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the lands surrounding Judah, 
so that they did not go to war against Jehoshaphat. Some Philistines brought Jehoshaphat gifts and silver as tribute, and the Arabs brought him flocks, 7,700 rams and 7,700 goats. Jehoshaphat became more and more powerful. He built forts and stores, cities in Judah, and had large supplies in the towns of Judah. He also kept experienced fighting men in Jerusalem. Ezekiel was blessed for obeying God's commandments. He held fast to the Lord and did not stop following him. He kept the commands the Lord had given Moses, and the Lord was with him. He was successful in whatever he undertook. Josiah was a good king faithful to the law of Moses. Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did. With all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength, in accordance with all the law of Moses. The actions of all of these kings were evaluated by how they obeyed the law of Moses. The Babylonian captivity was a result of the disobedience of the children of Israel to the law of Moses. Specifically, they started worshipping idols. All this took place because the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God who had brought them up out of Egypt from under the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They worshipped other gods and followed the practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before them, as well as the practices that the kings of Israel had introduced. Daniel confessed, All Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. After the captivity, the people began to obey the law of Moses again. Then Joshua, son of Jozadak, and his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and his associates began to build the altar of the God of Israel to sacrifice burnt offerings on it, in accordance with what is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. After the return from the Babylonian captivity, Ezra read the book of the law to the people. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon, as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. It then says, They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving the meaning so that the people understood what was being read. If they obeyed his commandments, the Lord promised never to remove them from the land again. I will not again make the feet of the Israelites leave the land I assigned to your ancestors, if only they will be careful to do everything I commanded them concerning all the laws, decrees, and regulations given through Moses. These passages make it clear that the law of Moses was considered the authoritative word of God to the people of Israel. They were expected to obey the commandments contained within the law. If they did not obey, then they would be subject to the punishment of God. The entire history of the nation of Israel is based upon its obedience or disobedience to the law of Moses. However the law of Moses was not the end of God's revelation to Israel. We do find that other divine writings, apart from the law of Moses, were to be expected.